In this video, I wanna talk about some of the research basics that will help you out as you do your research for your paper. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is the topic for your paper. And the first thing you wanna do is get approval of your topic from your professor. All right, they created the assignment, they're gonna be grading the assignment, so you wanna be on the same page as them. Uh, as you're doing your research, you might end up going too broad or too narrow, or maybe you kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent and maybe the professor doesn't want that. So it's always good to keep in touch with the professor, make sure you're on the same page because there's nothing worse than doing a lot of research and then realizing that it's not what the professor wanted, then you have to go back and redo your research. So get approval of your topic from your professor. And then you wanna identify proper resources. First, you wanna identify what resources the professor wants because sometimes they might have a limitation on what resources you want or they might require certain things. So for example, a professor might want uh, at least two books or maybe they want three journal articles or maybe they only want you to use two websites. So figure out what the professor wants uh, resource-wise uh, as the bare minimum. And then what you wanna do is you wanna identify proper resources too as in, um, which ones will help you with the best information for your research. So the first one is books. Books give you in-depth information on your topic. Uh, periodicals, these are articles from magazines, journals, and newspapers. They give you more recent information because they're published uh, every so often, and they give you in-depth information on your topic also. And then also internet websites. And with internet websites, you wanna make sure that you're getting good resources because there's a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of bad stuff out there. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then I mentioned academic journals. If you're not sure what they are, they are actually articles and research done by professionals in the field. They could be professors, they could be doctors uh, or interested parties. And academic journals are also called scholarly or peer reviewed. And that's because when they're published, uh, they submit their articles to these journals and they're reviewed by their peers, other professors, other doctors, et cetera. And then if it gets approved, then it gets published. So it goes through a little bit more rigorous uh, research and review than a magazine or a newspaper article. And then you wanna diversify your resources, okay? Mix it up a little bit, add a book or two, get some journal articles, some magazine articles, get some good websites, okay? No professor wants to have just a paper that you use three websites on. So diversify your resources, mix it up a bit. And the next thing I wanna talk about is internet resources, which I mentioned briefly. And you wanna evaluate your websites. And so what we do is we use a thing called the crap test. That's currency, reliability, authority, and purpose. So the currency, is the information recent? Is it important to have recent information with your topic? So make sure you know when the date was that was the information was created or came out. And sometimes you can look at a date on the website or at the bottom there, there might be a copyright date. So take a look for that. And next thing we wanna talk about is reliability because anyone can publish on the internet. And a lot of internet resources are not verified by editors or fact checkers. So, uh, you know, ask yourself, can you verify the information from another source? Are there any references given? So check that out when you're looking at internet resources. Next thing too is authority. It's often difficult to determine who the author of an internet resource is. So look for an author, look to see if there's a name, if there's any information about the author, are they tied into any institutions or any organizations? Okay, what makes them such an expert on this topic? And then think about the purpose. Why is this website here? Is it trying to sell you something? Are they uh, an educational institution that, that has a vested interest in this topic? Is it a think tank? Is it just a fourth grader doing a website? So think about the purpose of the website you're looking at, okay? so. I always look at the crap test when I'm looking at websites. If you're not quite sure, ask for help, ask your professor, ask a librarian, email me, we can check things out for you. The filter bubble. Also think about the filter bubble. This is a concept where, okay, you go to Google and you do research and it customizes your searches for you, which is awesome. It's great because you're in that filter bubble. It takes a look at what you've been looking at and then customizes the research results to fit what you believe in and what you've been searching for. But it's also good to get outside the filter bubble sometimes. Okay, so maybe you want to go to other websites that you don't go to regularly, or you might want to think about the other side of the topic and look for websites by them. Also, you can use uh, search engines such as DuckDuckGo, which is available at DuckDuckGo.com, and they actually don't track you, don't follow you, don't do anything, so you can get like a, a, like a fresh search when you use something like that. So it's all your biases aren't included in that search. Okay, so the filter bubble is something to think about, especially when you're doing research for a paper. And then finally, spot fake news. Okay, this kind of ties into the crap test too, but consider the source, okay? Where is it from? Who is it from? 
Read beyond, okay? Is it the whole story? Do, do your due diligence, look at other resources. Check the author, again, is the author legitimate or not? Supporting sources, is there links to other resources to support what they are saying and are they legitimate sources? Check the date, again, is it current, is it old? Is it a joke? There's a lot of, um, a lot of satire out there and some people take that satire as real and then they post it on Facebook and there you go. Uh, check your biases. Again, what do you feel? Okay, uh, take a look at that. And then are you looking at just websites that are extremely biased on your side? Okay, look at some other things and then ask the experts, ask a librarian, email me, check with your professor or a fact checking site. Uh, so just make sure you don't fall for the fake news, which is going around quite a bit these days. All right. And the next thing I want to mention are library databases. And library databases uh, we have here at NPC. If you go to the tab from the website that you access this video from, if you go to the tab of articles, you'll see links to websites. And it's also on the library homepage. There are videos in that tab for articles that shows you how to use these different databases and how to access them through the library homepage or through um, the page that you're on. But that being said, library databases are great because they're full of magazines, journals, newspapers, reports, videos, etc. These are from trusted sources. So unlike when you go to Google and you do a search, you kind of hope and pray that it's from a good resource. These library databases that we subscribe to, they collect resources and they're from legitimate magazines, newspapers, journals, uh, people that do reports, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so it's a great place and you don't have to kind of wonder where they came from, okay? Still be critical about what you find, but you know that they do come from trusted resources, all right? So again, check out the articles tab in the website that you are uh, accessing this video from and you definitely wanna start there with your research. And finally, I want to go on to brainstorming on your topic. And so it's very important when you start uh, your topic, first of all, you've got approval from your professor, and then brainstorm on it. You might know a lot about this topic, you might only know a little bit about your topic, but keep a list of these search terms, and then as you're doing your research, you want to write down other search terms that come up. It could be people, ideas, concepts, companies, et cetera, et cetera. And when you use these different search terms in your searches, on the internet or in the library databases, you'll get different results and some search terms are a lot better than others. And so, for example, you can see my example here, I'm doing social activism uh, via social media and I start off with social activism and social media. I go down to social change, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Slacktivist, which is a word I did not know until I did research for this. Communication, ideology, Twitter revolution in Iran. There's a lot of different things going on with social media, both positive and negative, activist and efficient. So these are just a few search terms that I may use when I'm doing search for my topic. So brainstorming is very, very important. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Boolean operators. This is the way we talk to the databases. Now, if you do a Google search, a certain version of these Boolean operators do work. If you go to Google, check out the advanced search, they have Boolean options there. But that being said, I wanna talk about Boolean operators and I wanna talk about the big, I call, I call them the big three. There are a lot of Boolean operators, you can really customize your searches, but for now, I just wanna give you the big three. Okay, these are uh, instructions telling the database what to do. What you're doing is you're combining your search terms together, you're customizing your search to get the best results at the top of your results list as quickly as possible because there's a lot of information out there. Okay, you guys have the opposite problem that I had way back in when I was doing research back 40 years ago. There was not enough information. You guys have too much information. So this is a great way to weed through. So I come up here, the first thing you wanna do is quotation marks. If you have a multiple worded subject or a very specific term that has multiple words in it, put a quotation mark around it. Okay, so for example, uh, Monterey Peninsula College, if I'm doing research on Monterey Peninsula College, I'm gonna put quotation marks around it because I want all my results to have nothing but Monterey Peninsula College in it, okay? Now, if I take those quotation marks off, it will search for Monterey Peninsula College together. It'll also find those words separately. So if I do a search, I'm gonna get a lot more results, but you're gonna get stuff like with the word Monterey in paragraph one, the word Peninsula in paragraph two, and the word college in paragraph five. It has nothing to do with Monterey Peninsula College, but it comes up in my results. So this is a great way to help you narrow your search. Okay, so for my topic from the brainstorming, social media. I'm gonna put quotation marks around it because that is a two word subject a concept that I'm interested in searching, I wanna keep those words together. Same thing with social activism. 
So very powerful. This works great in Google too. Uh, but I want to show you another Boolean operator too. And that's the word and. And the word and helps you narrow down your topic, but it tells the database that this search term has to be in my results. Okay, so for example, let's say I do a search for, on that first example, social activism. Okay, I put quotation marks around it. So I do social activism by itself. I do a search and maybe I get 2000 articles that deal with social activism. But I'm interested in the, uh, the aspect of Twitter and social activism. So now I put uh, social activism and Twitter. Now both those search terms have to be in my results. And what happens is it'll search for those two search terms together. And instead of 2,000 articles, maybe I get 500 articles that talk about social activism and Twitter. So it helps you focus your search. The more search terms you put in, the less results you're going to get, but the more focused your search is going to be. That being said, you want to start off with one search term and then build from there. And if you notice, I'm not putting in a question. I am putting in just the keywords. And it's really easy because then I can take a keyword out and throw another one in. And it's very easy to do that. And I can come up with some better results, hopefully. Second example, again, social media. Maybe I get 5,000 articles that talk about social media. But if I do social media and activism, maybe I narrow it down to 500 articles. But then I do social media and activism and risk and maybe I narrow it down to 10 articles. So that's a very powerful Boolean operator there. I do a lot of advanced research and I use quotation marks and the word and 99.9% .9 of the time and I find out what I'm looking for. You should find what you're looking for within one, two or three search terms, uh, but uh, these are the two best. There's one other one that you might use too. It's the Boolean operator or. This helps you expand your search. You can do an either or search. Okay, and so this is something you might come into contact with if you have like search terms that are similar or you wanna do a comparative search. So for example, I'm doing my uh, topic on social media. Now a lot of articles talk about social media, but other articles talk about Facebook specifically, which will work for my, for my paper. So if I do a search for social media, maybe I get a thousand articles. But if I do social media or Facebook, it can do either or, maybe I get 3,000 articles because there's articles that talk about social, there's a thousand that talk about social media, there are other ones that talk about Facebook, or they also mention social media or Facebook, do an either or search. So it's a great way to expand your search, but the big ones that are important in this are quotation marks and the word and. So if you have any questions on the research basics, feel free to ask your professor. You can email me, and my email is on this website, or ask a librarian. We are here to help you out.